Hey, this week's episode, we're taking a bite right out of history. We are going to talk about some old camp breads from the Old West. So come on, saddle up, and ride down the old trail with us for some Panda Campo. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on a glorious day the Lord has made. I'll tell you for sure. Who am I? Cowboy Kent Rollins, and we got a whole lot of cooking going on here. If you're a new subscriber, this is your first time to ever watch our video. We welcome you. Oh, we do. We're so glad to have you. But be sure and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything we got going on. And the dingy dong bell. You want to ring it. That way you get notified. Y'all are in for a treat because this is going to be a history lesson and a cooking lesson. What are we talking about? Pande Campo. Country bread, sort of is what it's called. Camp bread, cookie bread, cowboy bread. But also we got you a special deal we do. We're gonna do a collaboration. Yeah, you heard me say it. And it is with a friend of ours. Come in here, I'm gonna whisper his name to you. Arizona Ghost Rider. He is a good guy. He's gonna share some great history with us. Now, was talking about Pande Campo and its origination. Well, back on the Texas-Mexican border so many years ago in the original Cowboys, Vaqueros it was, yeah. So, you needed something you could put in some saddlebags and take with you. Sure, if you had an old chuck wagon like this one we got here and you had a camp cook, you was in for a treat, cause what was a heaven? Probably some sourdough biscuits but it's hard to tote that sourdough out there in a little old saddlebag and keep it with you all the time. But old tales say where they would take one of them old tin snuff cans and they could mix their sugar, their salt, and their baking powder and have it right there in it. Carry them a little sack of flour, they had a little hog lard, that's all there is to it. So we're gonna do it the old traditional way and we're gonna make it like I've seen so many of them do many years ago and uh, let's get after it. Two cups of all-purpose flour. And I like to go ahead and sift it in there and make sure that it is finer than frog's hair and got some air in it. We're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. And to that, now traditionally old recipes would call like for maybe one teaspoon or two teaspoons of baking powder. And folks, when you're using baking powder, make sure you check the date on them cans to make sure it is fresh. Me, I like for mine to jump up. What are we using? A tablespoon full, two tablespoons of lard. And I just like to pinch it up in there. We're not gonna use a crumb cutter, not gonna use any of that. We're just gonna use our fingers and go to mashing it around. We just want it to be sort of crumbled up and mixed in there really well. Cause if you don't get it mixed in there well, your dough will be a little gummy when it cooks. So at this point in time, we are gonna dump it right out here. I want you to just take that and mound it up there make you a hole right there in the middle. What are we gonna do? We're gonna make a little swimming pool we are. And we're gonna start with, what? About a third of a cup of oil. I like to pour about half of it in there at one time. And I like to use these two tools right here. This was more the old traditional way of how they would mix it so many years ago. Just a, an old stick. A lot of people use a hard piece of plastic now. I just want you to incorporate that oil in there really well. What are you using? I am using a Cowboy Kent Rollins hash knife. What, you don't have one? Well, it's time for an infomercial. Have you ever looked for that perfect product in your kitchen that can chop, dice, slice, scrape, use as a spatula, and even an ice scraper on difficult times in the winter? Look no further, you have found one here, KentRollins.com. Thank you. Keep folding that flyer back up there to it because I want to get rid of all them big lumps of oil that have got in there. The way that we're doing it here by making this well in the middle and starting over, that was the old traditional way of making pan de campo. We're gonna make us another well in there. Add us a little more oil. Let's take it back. Same process again. As you can see, this is sort of knotted up pretty good. Just keep chopping and incorporating that oil, lard, and flour back together because next we're gonna add some milk. Now, you get to this point traditionally, I don't think maybe so them vaqueros or them cowboys had a gallon of milk or a jug of milk in a saddlebag. They might've had to use water or maybe you're gonna go out there and rope your cow dally up and just do the wild cow milk and get you a little. Now, we're gonna use three fourths to a cup. It always sort of depends on what the mixture ends up looking like there to last. So let's well her back up. Add us a little milk. 
right in the middle there. Uh oh, there's a leak in the swimming pool. And just go to incorporating. Adding a little more milk. At this point, we've added about a half a cup of milk and things are beginning to stick a little. So you will pay attention here and get you some flour back on your board because we're going to need it. Come back in here. Let's get that whale back in there. Now then comes that point in time when we got about three-fourths a cup of milk in there just to go to working with your hands. And we want to get the sticky out of it. Make sure you get back in here and get the rest of that milk. Be sure you rake it back up. Things are going to try to stick a little. Get you some more flour. Put back here under it. Set it there. Shan, you feel broke? Why? Because we're fitting the need to dough. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Get it here. You can see. I want it to where it doesn't stick to your hands anymore. And it's not. What's it feel like? It's sort of soft. Got a little moisture in it. But folks, we got to knead it. That's going to take a little of that out. Last week's video, the soap of peas, and you had to stretch that dough. This is sort of the same thing. Bring it back over here. That way we make sure that any of them lard or any of that oil that is knotted up in there is going to be in a clump. We're going to go about two to three minutes. We've got a really soft dough here, but it is not sticking to your fingers anywhere. That's what we after. I don't want it dry and come crumbly. I just want it to where it's got some softness to it, but you can see it ain't sticking nowhere. Just form this back up into a pretty good sized little ball. Mash it with your hand a little. Flour your board, kitchen floor, whatever you're working on. I like to put it on one side, give it a mash. Put it on the other side, give it a mash. We're gonna roll out about nearly a half inch thick. But I like to roll it. We wanna keep it as round as possible. When you get it to there, let's roll it over and let's roll the other side. Can you see that thickness? That's about what we're after. There's no rest time, folks. We got our 10 inch oven greased. We got our bread rolled out, ready to go. We got some coals over there in Old Bertha and we're gonna get after it. Let me get some trivet and some coals and let's get to cooking. So you see me break out that old torch. It was a little foggy early this morning and even a heavy dew and we are blessed to have it, we are but you want to dry that grass out with either some coal or some fire. That way we're not wasting heat when we're putting it in there. And if you need some of them tips, hey, y'all check out our cast iron playlist. There's a lot of that stuff that'll help you cook in a Dutch oven. But you see me loaded up really heavy around the outside on the bottom and really heavy on top. This is sort of a dense bread so we can add a little more heat to it. Not a lot of breeze this morning, but we'll have to rotate just a little. Now, traditionally, them old cowboys or them vaqueros that were making this might have just had one little old iron skillet, set it right directly on the coals, or pull the coals a little ways from it. Put that bread in there, let it brown a little, reach in there with your finger and turn it over right there and brown the other side. I really like to cook it this way without having to turn it over because I think it gives it a little more rise up there. Trivets, y'all seen ours. You can get them off our website, you can, but we use them a lot. It's a way that you can regulate heat with a Dutch oven. Either a short trivet, which is about three inches tall, or a tall trivet, which is about five and a half. The slower something needs to bake, tall trivet most of the time. Now, when I'm talking about rotation, I'm not talking about go over and get the handyman jack, jack it up, and let's change all four wheels around. I'm talking about rotating the top of the oven lid one direction, the bottom the other. Evens out any hot spot in coals. You might have one more on one side than you do the other. So rotation is your friend. We got some of that time, so we're going to go visit my good friend Santi at the Arizona Ghost Riders, and he's going to show us some history and share with us a little more about Pandy Campo. Well, hello there, Red River Ranch Rollins, Rollinses, Rollinses, the Rollins family of the Red River Ranch. Right. Santee here, going to give you a brief history on Pan de Campo. Pan de Campo, or camp bread, has a fascinating history in the Old West. It seems to date back before the Civil War as a very filling bread that would provide vaqueros a tasty carbohydrate to accompany their meals on the range. Although its origins are Spanish, it was adopted by hardworking cowboys of many cultural backgrounds in the great state of Texas. It could be used in place of sourdough biscuits if your sourdough starter was compromised on the trail drive to Dodge City. 
Richard King and Mifflin Kennedy, successful ranchers in Texas in the mid to late 19th century, employed vaqueros who were known to chow down on some pan de campo with beans and other proteins while out on the range. In fact, they still do today. In 2005, pan de campo became the state bread of Texas, which really heated up Texas toast, who, quite frankly, has always been a sore loser. It was rigged. Well, it got done, it did. Got brown on top, and I'm pretty sure it's brown on the bottom. Got me some butter and smeared right over the top right after I took it off that fire. I'm just gonna use it like you would a cake, and I'm just gonna turn it out of there, and that's the bottom side, and the top side is burning my finger, so I'm gonna turn it over. This is a pretty easy thing to cook in a Dutch oven. You can see how it slid around there on the bottom. You just gotta make sure that you grease your pan before you start. You're gonna get a pretty even little cook there. You can see that it's done all the way around. So pretty easy to cook, don't take long at all. Let's cut in there and see what's happening. We'll just take this here hash knife, go all the way across. Looky there, that's what I'm after. Mm. And you can smell it that it's sort of to me like an old traditional bakery bread that when I smell of it and you see it there, I'll be hearing me something over. Hey Duke, what is that? Look over in them bushes. What have I told you, folks? When you go to breaking out food, people seem to show up. This guy's been camped out in the plum thickets all morning. I think I smell pan de campo. And we got to get these taste testers, Dookie. It's pan de campo. Easy. Duke says, how many tail wags do you get? Can you see the beagle, Shan? Good boy. I don't know I'm where you come day. from, but I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here, too. Hmm. Mm, that's good. Good old traditional bakery bread. Make you want to go out and just do the cha-cha-cha. Whew, takes me south of the border, it does. That is some fine eating, it is. Well, I have a special shout out this week to our good friends at Listening Post AYR. Now, they're a veterans group. If you're in trouble, you need to talk to somebody. You got something going on, you just need somebody to discuss it with. These folks will help you out. Shannon, I'll have you a link down there below. You can check it out. But if you're struggling, you need somebody to visit with, hey, give these folks a shout because they support our channel. We're going to support them, so it is a good deal. I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and veterans who have kept that old flag flying over our camp no matter where we at. It'll always be there and we never forget you. Thank you again to Santee and the Arizona Ghost Riders for helping us out in the history part of this deal. Be sure and check his channel out. Shows you some of the great history of the Old West. Now remember what I've always told you and Mr. Rogers said it many times. Be a good neighbor. Share your food, your love with all the folks you know. So I'm going to share with the Beagle and Duke again because they do love this bread. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe so you don't want to miss out on none of this. Thank y'all so much for dropping by the wagon today. It was a great and glorious day. And God bless you one and all. And I'll see you down the Pan de Campo Trail. Hey Santi, how's it going? Good, just gotta upload the video to Kent Rollins. Oh uh, yeah, you got that deadline, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. What's that? What's that smell? It's a pan de campo, it's burning. Oh, go ahead, I'll, I'll get it. it. Yeah, all right. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Upload! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It looks good. Oh yeah, it came out all right. Yeah, I... Ah! It's hot. <laughs>